welcome to the what has become the annual QCAM uh, awards lectures. Uh, it will be awards plural um, this year. We have two of them um, to, to, to give out. And, and so my name is John Herbert. I'm, I guess, representing QCAM management. Um, and so uh, every year for the past few years, we've given out an, an award to a QCAM developer um, in honor of um, Mikhail Vormit um, from the Heidelberg Group, a very outstanding QCAM developer who um, unfortunately passed away at too young of an age. But we honor his memory by by presenting a, a, a Wormit Award in his honor. And, and broadly speaking, the, the Wormit Award is is given to um, uh, to to, to uh, given for service to the QCAM developer community, sort of broadly defined. And so, you know, we've taken this to mean um, doing work for QCAM that that is of of benefit um, to others, and, and you know, goes beyond the sort of narrow confines of your own perhaps thesis research. And and, and so, um, this year, it's a great honor to to give that award. Um, actually, to a QCAM employee, um, but but before that, a longtime QCAM uh, contributor, Shentian Feng. Um, so Shentian received his undergraduate degree from uh, Beijing Normal University, and and then um, in 2011 he came to the U.S. and joined the group of Anna Krylov at University of Southern California, where he completed his PhD in 2016 um, with a thesis titled Predictive Electronic Structure Methods for Strongly Correlated Systems, Method Development and Application to Singlet Fission. And I certainly know those, those singlet fission papers well um, myself. And, and so um, Fentian then, then went on to do a, a postdoc that was funded jointly by uh, Martin Head Gordon's group at Berkeley, but also by QCHEM. Um, but then for the last uh, three years, he's been a full-time employee at at QCAM, and and during that time, um, he's worked on a couple of different things that that really touch um, a lot of our daily lives as as QCAM users. And so, um, for me, um, you know, I know Chintian's work because he's he's essentially rewritten uh, most of the core DFT routines in the form of libks. Um, including including new sort of up to date uh, routines for the numerical quadrature parts of the of the XC functionale, uh, but he's also done a lot of work on the back end um, for resolution of identity type methods, um, both for equation of motion couple cluster um, and and also with Martin Head Gordon's group for the the AUK RIK algorithm for for doing resolution of identity for for Hartree Fock K. Um, and, and so, really, just just has has done a tremendous amount of work in um, in in things that we use uh, every single day, um, and um, and and you know, along with that development, has has done a lot of work on um, on really modernizing the infrastructure of QCAM. And so, um, with that, it, it's my pleasure to turn things over to Shintian. Yeah. Okay. So our idea T. Okay. Yep. I, I can see it. Okay, uh, thank you, John. Um, hello, everyone. It is my great honor to receive the uh, Mikhail Wormit Award um, in this virtual symposium. I would like to share some of my works um, since I joined the QCAM community, uh, including some have already finished and some that are still ongoing in the QCAM office. And I would like to use this opportunity to um, Mystify the code development and maintenance procedures inside the QCAM office. Uh, so my uh, first project with QCAM was done in Professor um, Anna Krilov's group, which was to uh, use resolution of identity or triskit decomposition representation to replace the um, two-electron 
uh, two electron repulsion integrals in couple cluster and equation motion couple cluster so that the um, the um, VVVV and OVVV uh, type integrals are no longer formed and saved either in memory or on disk. So um, for large calculations, you can not afford in a cluster. Now you can afford it. Um, here's one benchmark example I took from the published paper, paper on which we can see the um, CCSD wall time is improved in our CCSD uh, slightly. Um, Typically, due to the error cancellation, the accuracy of um, of the properties or energy differences is uh, two or three orders of magnitude smaller than um, um, than the absolute error. Um, and errors um, in RIUM um, typically is like uh, in excitation energy is like ten to the minus three e f one. Um, here are just two um, QCAM input RAMs as examples for um, RI, and CIS, RI and CD, CCSD geometry optimization calculation. Um, typically, uh, four is recommended for um, a gradient type calculation, and three is suggested for uh, energy. Um, the second project I want to mention in this symposium is that we um, use linear scaling technique, uh, fast multiple method. Um, to reduce the computational scaling of the effective fragment potential method, um, the FP. For those of you who uh, those of you who are not familiar with the FP method, uh, you can see it as a um, polarized BMM method with no empirical parameters. Um, QCAM supports like pure EFP and QM EFP. Um, a QM can be um, couple cluster, uh, equation of motion, ADC, DFT, TDFT. Um, this figure here, just um, an approved uh, scaling improvement we achieved so far. Um, the whole work is not published yet, and the uh, new OMP um, parallel supported QM EFP FMM will be available in, in a year or two. Um, one of my ongoing projects is the um, QCAMP with periodic boundary conditions or saying QCPBC, it is, uses Gaussian type orbitals GDO as the um, computational basis. Currently, we support pure hybrid rate separated BFP, um, RBB10 non local correlational functional for gamma point energy, um, K points energy calculation, and band gap calculations. Uh, We're currently working on implementing our gradient and Hessian and um, the first version of um, QCPC will be released in the near future. Uh, my another ongoing project is to um, implement and improve OMP parallel performance of BFP, TDFP energy, and the gradient, and Cassian for pure hybrid rate separate BFP functionals. Uh, we've also implemented analytical gradient, analytical Cassian. Um, and TDFT excitation energies for VB10, non local correlation functional. Um, here's one um, scaling analysis of SCF wall time running in serial with respect to molecular system size um, using the upcoming QCAM version 6.0.0. Uh, the functional I tested here is uh, one of our favorite. Um, Omega B97M V. Um, uh, so the wall time of the calculation uh, should be dominated by four parts, right? Um, Coulomb, range separated exact exchange, um, BFT exchange and correlation, um, VB10 non local correlation. Um, the molecular system I used here is the uh, naphthalene crystal. So the X axis here is the number of uh, um, nephilims um, using that two TZVP basis. We have about uh, 350 uh, basis functions per nephilim. So the number of basis function increased from like 700 to about 25 um, hundreds. The Y axis um, is the total wall time in seconds for SCF calculation running in zero. And the number of SF cycles for all of the calculations, uh, um, I 
think there are, are uh, to converge to the threshold 10 to the minus eight, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> it's about uh, 13 cycles. Um, as we can see here, um, the wall time is dominated by um, the exact exchange, which is the red curve. Um, J uh, is the blue curve. Um, and K and BV10, which is the yellow curve, um, they all scale um, near quadratically. And DFT uh, exchange correlation, uh, which is the gray curve down here, um, scales between linear and quadratic. Um, here's the OMP parallel efficiency analysis. Um, I, I chose the uh, Napoleon Heptima to be our test system. The x axis um, is the number of CPU cores. Uh, y axis is the speed up um, because the calculation is dominated by uh, exact exchange. Remember, uh, the overall SCF parallel efficiency, it, which is the purple line here, uh, is very close to the parallel efficiency with the exact exchange, which is the red line. Um, now we achieve about 70% efficiency, 70% efficiency uh, when number of um, cores is more than 16, uh, which is um, um, also pretty good, although not best. Um, now I want to show the work uh, that I uh, started about like a month ago, uh, which is to use the um, density fitting approach to speed up, to speed up Coulomb and exact exchange. Uh, the QCAM existing RI um, JK algorithms use explicit inverse matrix of the two electron two uh, center integrals. Here is QR inverse, uh, which is computed by um, you know solving eigenproblems of QR matrix and then um, inverse the eigenvalues and multiply up eigenvectors back to get the matrix inverse. Um, in my new RI code, um, this um, computation or a uh, computation of inverse matrix is replaced by solving linear equations um, directly uh, because the latter is more um, computational effect uh, efficient and numerically stable uh, in principle. Um, here I would like to you uh, I would like to use my current project as an example uh, to show how a typical procedure that um, QCAM employees use for um, code development. So first we start from um, um, start from the development branch created from our well-tested QCAM chunk. Then uh, we um, implement a reference algorithm um, which can be you know existing well-tested code or an algorithm that is extremely simple um, without considering like integral screening, density screening, parallelism, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, in my RI case, um, uh, my reference code is like form uh, minu q, um, qr inverse, and then form the two electron four center integrals, like what I'm doing regular j, and then I use um, you know simple nested for loop to form the final j matrix with given density matrix. So this code is very simple. Uh, it's quartet scaling, so nobody will use it for real calculations, right? Um, then I start code my production level um, RIJ um, using these steps. As a reminder, um, the difference between my new algorithm and the QCAM existing ones um, is that the um, QR inverse matrix is no longer formed. And uh, this solving linear equation step will be used instead. Um, so the production level algorithm uh, will be passed, um, you know, using the reference implementation with um, random uh, input, um, random input density matrices, for example, and also different given amount of memory, given different given number of CPU cores, et cetera, to test correctness. Um, once the correctness is checked for all possible con conditions, um, next step um, is to optimize the code until it reaches um, a good parallel performance. I already use V2 um, for performance profiling. It can tell you where you know, the computation hot, computational hotspots are, uh, where the CPUs are idling, um, 
which is the light green bars here for each thread. Um, during the optimization, I always check the correctness in the reference implementation um, so that if there's any new mistakes, bugs, bugs are caused by the new modifications uh, for optimization, then I can catch and fix them immediately. So um, once the high performance code is finished, uh, we need to um, prepare new sample jobs if necessary. Um, then um, also need to check all existing examples and tests so that I did not break others code. Um, then merge my development branch to QCAM trunk. Um, last step is to update the QCAM manual um, if, if needed. Um, besides all the development, um, QCAM stuff scientists are um, all kind of responsible for code maintenance. Um, typically, our support team, you know, uh, respond the customer support email in about 24 hours. Um, once we realize the support problem is a um, kind of new bug or issue, then we will uh, firstly submit it as a um, ticket in our tracking system, um, then start to fix it either ourselves or contact the developers um, if necessary, uh, depending on what the problem is. And, was the programmer of the, that piece of uh, uh, related code. Uh, once the bug is fixed, um, its input and output files will be included in the test set, uh, which will be run uh, approximately um, bi-weekly and uh, once before each official QCAM release. Uh, just make sure that the bug never appears in subsequent versions of QCAM. Um, also, when new features emerge in the QCAM, um, a um, corresponding example will be included in the comprehensive test set. And several examples, like, um, like reasonable size, uh, reasonably large system size, will be included in the performance set. These two sets will be tested once um, before the official QCAM release. Um, which just to make sure that the features we have um, didn't get broken um, and their performance uh, were not degraded. So everything should be uh, as nice as it was first checked in. Um, now back to the project I'm working on, um, the RIJK project. Um, it is currently at a stage of um, optimizing the OMP parallel performance. Um, the data in the following slides uh, were actually generated in the uh, last two days. Um, some even just uh, came up half an hour ago. I just put in the slides. <laughs> I hope my new algorithms could be um, <laughs> included in upcoming QCAM 6.0.0, uh, but most likely I'm afraid that they won't be available until um, 6.0.0. Um, here's a scaling analysis of SCF wall time uh, with respect to molecular system size. Where the molecular system I use um, um, is same uh, is identical to what I have shown in case of regular JK. Um, uh, note, note that in my new code, um, according to given memory available, um, there are two algorithms for um, for any RIJK. So when given memory is available, the two electron free center integrals. Uh, will be pre-computed and reused um, through the SCF iterations. This algorithm is much faster than the second one, uh, which is you know compute two electron free center integrals on the fly. So you compute and form and release. Um, this um, you know first algorithm is is in principle much faster, uh, but needs more lot memory. Um, for example, um, if I have six um, Nephilim, where the total number of basis functions is about 2,000. Um, about 30 gigabytes of memory is required for one two electron free center integral matrix. And because this functional, uh, we need to keep two copies of um, um, two electron free center integrals. One is for J, which is regular two electron repulsion operator. Um, K is using um, range separated operator. So we need to um, total is 60 gigabytes. Um, so when given memory available, I will just pre-compute and keep in memory. Um, 
As you can see from this picture, um, um, forming two electron three center integrals itself, uh, which is um, um, green curve, um, and uh, once it's formed, uh, the rest is just like a, a DGM V operation, matrix vector multiplication, and solving linear equations. Rij here um, is blue curve. Uh, is blue curve. Um, you see, these two guys are almost ignorable uh, in the um, in the in the total wall time. Um, and um, VB10 here, which is yellow curve, um, become dominant. Um, comparing against uh, a couple of slides ago, uh, where VB10 is is almost ignorable, the dominant is K and J. Um, now uh, using RI, we have we have much better. Um, but the scaling here, uh, you can see this overall scaling for for J and for K, um, they are cubic uh, or, uh, or more uh, or even cubic, between cubic and quartet, because in this case, you need to form um, MO-based two electron three center integrals um, and also uh, solving the uh, linear equation is, is in this case, is quartet scaling. Um, when two electron three center integrals, integrals are computed on the fly, um, then the time for computing Rij and Rik, um, you know, now it exists wall time for dv 10 which is the yellow curve, um, because most of time span is just recomputing two electron three center integrals. Uh, and their scaling, you can see the scaling now is getting um, reduced to, um, you know, between quadratic and cubic. Because, because remember, the, the, the scaling for computing two electron three center integrals is like um, this one. Because, because um, it becomes dominant, then its scaling is reduced, um, which somewhat is expected. OK, here is the OMP parallel efficiency analysis uh, for the algorithm that pre computes uh, and keeps two electron three center integrals. Uh, you know, this is still an ongoing project, and the um, parallel performance optimization has not been done yet for, um, for especially for our IK. I'm still working on it. Um, as you can see, the RIJ, which is a blue curve, um, is a little problematic, um, but I will not going to further optimize it because, um, you know, for in this case, when two electron three center integrals pre computed. All left behind is just the matrix vector multiplication, uh, which is we use MKL uh, DGMV here, and we can see the performance here. We are already better than him um, because we have also the solving linear equation step, which has better parallel performance overall. We we did we did um, this, um, but it's really hard to get improved because we all call MKL uh, function, so it's it is what it is. Uh, but OCRIK, um, it seems like it still has a lot of place to, uh, space to be improved, uh, which I'm working on currently. Um, also, this is um, um, OMP parallel efficiency analysis for algorithms that two electron four center integrals are computed on fly. Uh, in this case, the parallel efficiency, which uh, for, for RIJ, um, is actually expected much better because it's dominated by two electron three center integrals evaluation. And if you remember from previous uh, slides here, the blue, uh, the green curve um, is the two electron three center integrals evaluation. So it's 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 parallel efficiency very perfect, and so does this Rij. Um, and Rik here um, not perfect well, uh, but it's um, over 50% uh, efficiency when it's 32 parallel, uh, 32 cores. I would say it's okay, but but still there's um, space to improve and overall efficiency is um, about 60% here. Um, but yeah, I'm still working on this. Um, and this data actually just came out like half an hour ago. Um, uh, Finally, um, there are just some examples uh, for um, like RAM sections for using RIJ, 
uh, Oc RIK and RIK. Uh, for those who are not familiar with um, how to trigger RI SF in QCAM, uh, this example here on the screen. And thank you for your attention. Um, that's all I want to talk here today. Any questions? Okay, sorry, I was searching for my microphone button. Um, so it, yeah, if, if um, anyone from the audience has a question, go ahead and type it into the box. Um, I don't see anything right now, but um, one thing I wanted to ask, what, what, what was the tool that you were using for profiling? Uh, that was V2, Intel V2. Okay. Um, it, you know, shows out which function is your hotspot. Actually, it can mm -hmm. jump into which line of code and also show the parallel efficiency here. Uh, uh, this example, I just pick up randomly. I used it before. It's not the current one. In this one, it's parallel efficiency actually was very good. So it it was really pleasing to see um, if if I if I read these data right that that you're actually bottlenecked now by the by the VV10 quadrature is that right? Uh, yeah. This the is yellow yeah. yellow curve. And that's that's right. fundamentally quadratic because it's a non-local kernel, right? So it's got two, two right. indices over which you need to to integrate, right? Unlike, although the the gray curve, I was a little, the, the gray curve in principle should go linear, right? Because that's, um, that's yeah. normal quadrature that only has one one index, right? So, okay. Yes. In principle, so linear, uh, but I think it's also related to the sparsity of the uh, molecular system because the screening of its grid points uh, really relate to the distances between uh, you know, remote basis function and current grid point. If your system is very dense, you know, everything's grounded, then I would say the scaling can go to quadratic. And if you are like linear, like helium line, um, just consistently increase that's that's precisely linear. Sure. Okay. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Quan Yu, do you do you see any? I don't, just want to make sure that I'm not reading this thing wrong. Yeah, there are some questions. Uh, oh, are there? Um, there are two. I can read it out. Oh, okay. I, d I don't see them. So will you will you yep. go ahead? That's, um, so since this is is currently available, what you would recommend as the best or most efficient combination for doing dense density feeding with DFT in DTM? Uh. So suggest best um, um, DFT, what? I didn't hear clearly, sorry. Uh, density feeding. What's, with what's, what's, what's your, what's your uh, preferred paradigm for large DFT calculations, I think is what the person is asking. Although I, I still don't see the question, but if, <laughs> I can't if see I, the question if either. I wanna go do a, do a large DFT calculation, you know, presumably with a functional that has exact exchange, what's your recommendation? Well, um, RIJ and RKIK, uh, for sure. Um, and yeah. Also, if you are a basis, target basis function have a lot of, um, basis function is large um, um, in, in a sense that you have a lot of virtual orbitals, then RKIK is your, is your almost best because RKIK get rid of all virtual blocks. Um, so it's, it's, it doesn't really scale as what I shown here. So if I, if I show 
um, uh, scaling analysis, you know, with fixed uh, molecular system, but increase the basis set. Um, so this will go quadratic scaling uh, in principle. So it's 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 even better. So RKIK is more suitable for large basis set. Do, do you find that the number of SCF cycles is about the same when you turn on the RI? <laughs> yeah, it's it's same. Uh, it's identical in this case. I know what you're talking about, John. Uh, so yeah. your problem, I'm, I'm still trying to find why, but yeah, I can reproduce your issue, but um, feel free somehow... To tell me, feel free yeah. to tell me if I'm doing it wrong. Uh, that's uh, no, the... no, no, you're, you're doing correct. Um, and, and it's somewhat related to the regional implementation that RIJ is not um, stable uh, using the peak inverse because of the EO condition matrix. Uh, sorry about the noise nearby. Um, but but with new implementation, still um, it uh, uses more SCF cycles than uh, regular um, JK. Um, it's, it's more. Um, so that's that's the problem currently for um, that's defeating SCF. I guess it's just um, we cannot guarantee the number of SCF cycles same or, or smaller. Um, in some cases, when when the PQ uh, or QR here inverse is CL condition or or not not very well, um, then you can get more cycles. And Do, does that problem then go away with your new algorithm for for solving no, linear? No, it didn't go away. <laughs> Mine okay. just make make result more numerically stable and, and faster. But uh, in terms of um, uh, accuracy, uh, it, it's still there. So that system, I guess, is particularly just require more SF cycles if you use RI. Okay, uh, our next question, and in what conditions uh, would this uh, uh, density, density fitting DAT be most accurate? Uh, in terms of system size or the element types or etc more accurate um uh, i guess it depends on um uh, what are you looking for uh, if you're looking for absolute energies then um i think rij and rik they are in errors of um, 10 to the minus 3 that order but if you are looking for uh, properties in terms of energy differences, uh, typically it's, as I mentioned, is like two or three orders of magnitude smaller. So it will be in um, kilojoule, um, point zero point zero five or kilojoule per mole per, um, per electron. That was the unit, I guess. Um, uh, for Arcai K, I think that there was a paper. Um, do that about the citations here. Uh, okay, I, I should put here, but yeah, that paper has a lot of benchmarks for our okay, K, okay. uh, which that 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 typically just error. Um, so it's it's quite acceptable for properties. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the the point is that you you can't or you shouldn't compare absolute energies. Ri versus versus exact integrals, right? Because what yeah. my, my recollection from the old Ulrich's papers way back in the 90s was like 10 to the minus five Hartree per atom errors, but but the but with energy differences, which are the only things that really matter to chemistry, um, you know, the accuracy is, is more or less exact. Yeah, yeah. That's your, you know, you want to know the difference between two different conformations those those ri errors basically cancel and the point is to try to recover essentially exact uh, relative energies at reduced cost right uh so john i think that's all the questions um thank thanks shintian by the way that that was that was really informative and you know very very cutting edge as of um, this morning. This concludes our webinar. We also invite you to visit us on Facebook. Thank you for your participation and see you at the next webinar.